but I promise people if they build for the long term, the relationships come and they, they can be very profitable. Uh, Chet, Chet Holmes told me it took him 17 years to get the relationship with Tony Robbins. So mm-hmm. was it worth it? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you just plant seeds and nurture. And even right. if you disconnect for some time, you can, I mean, again, it, uh, the opportunity brings itself again. You yes. never know from where. Another observation is your father was that close uh, with you, I assume, because uh, you were at the, his workplace. You were able to relate and do things together. Are you as close with your kids? Yeah, I did you, the same you... exact thing. Yeah, I did the exact thing my dad did. So I remember I used to bring my kids because I used to travel a lot because whether I was on business speaking or whatever. And especially when I was with Chet Holmes and Tony Robbins, we used to do a lot of events. So I would bring them to the events. So I remember they were four, four and five when I brought them to their first tax planning seminar. Wow. <laughs> they didn't know what was going on, but they're in this big room with a bunch of people and people talking with their dad. And they were, it was osmosis setting in, right? And I remember in between the um, founder of this tax planning institute said, you know, would you go up on stage and dance? Right. And so they did. They were doing ballet back then and things like that. And they did their stuff and everybody was applauding and clapping. And, you know, so I would bring them to these type of things and I would have them sit in rooms with millionaires and billionaires and just they were listening. And I remember Chet Holmes before he died, he used to play a a game with quarters and it was like a competitive game with both my daughters and teaching them how to think. Right. And I would bring them to all the palatial places that we went with Tony Robbins. Right. I mean, uh, we'd have a suite in Las Vegas or whatever. And so they'd get to be sitting there looking out at all of Las Vegas and when it lit up at night and things like that. So I was always conditioning their brains from an early, early age. My dad did that for me. And I found that to be extremely valuable because, you know, my dad unfortunately passed early, but I was able to carry on. Right. Mm-hmm. And plus, I was able to spend so much time with him. And he would tell me stories about life. And he would tell me stories about when he was younger. And he would tell me stories about my mother when he was younger, you know, and all these things. And even today, I just relish the, the conversations that we had. And I believe my daughters will do the same thing because I did exactly what my dad did. Awesome. Love it. And the experience they got, again, it's not just you telling them they were physically there. They felt that energy in a room with thousands of people cheering whether you understand or not it's contagious being on stage at such a young age in front of people wow that's interesting check check got it uh gotta get kids involved you know like i I heard somewhere and i kind of adopted this idea i'm an introvert i mentioned this multiple times already doing podcasts is not something natural and something that i would go and want to do now it's much easier right than my first sessions the reason I went to it, I got, I heard from someone the idea that if the kids will reach, yeah, if all parents want their kids to bypass them, right? We want right. our kids to be above and beyond of what we are. But with the new generation, the way everything is, it's such a huge resistance and so many distractions with social media and everything else that's going on. Kids not necessarily as competent as they face the world. So us as parents achieving a level that high that if kids at least get to the half of what the parents have done, you would already say, wow, thank God, at least that, right? So that yeah. creates pressure more not on them, more pressure on us. We got to push ourselves higher, work on ourselves to reach as much as possible so they can see if my father did it, if my mother did it, at least I got to give it a try, right? So, yeah, so I, I subscribe to that. So you sharing this kinds of, I think that would be a huge help if I would physically involve them just like you're doing and like your father did. Yeah. And yeah, I will tell you, if you do that, there'll be times where they'll be like, I just, why, why am I doing this? Right. I mean, it would be like, but the lessons sink in. Mm-hmm. And I, what I love about what you said was even though you're an introvert, you stepped up on your side to show that it could be done. Even an introvert can do a podcast. Right. And so children learn from those things. I know they learn from those things because as my children now are older, you know, in their twenties, they tell me that they learned this when it was at this moment and they didn't get the lesson at that point, but now they do. And so I find I can give parenting advice out there that the best thing that we could do for our kids is we can face who we are and become that person. Even if we're afraid of it, you know, upgrade our own fears and 
show them that we done it because they learn from that and they model it whether we, and they also model if we didn't, right? You can see generation to generation, certain traits are passed down. And I've learned that the greatest gift we can give them besides being there when they need us or even when they don't is us stepping up and becoming who we at least aspired to be. Even mm -hmm. if we don't make it all the way, it shows them that it can be done. Yes. And they're, cause they're going to face very similar challenges that we faced when they were growing up, when we were growing up, similar things. I can see it in my own children, even though I'm a male and they're female, they're still facing certain things that were challenging for me at, you know, 23, 24 years old. And so now I've kind of taught them a pathway that they can wor work through that. And I didn't really realize it when I was doing it, Baruch, but I realize it now. Yeah, Doc, I agree. You know, like an, uh, another thought comes to head, like we as fathers going into business and toiling, mothers do too. Why do we do that, right? We do it for our family, for our kids. Right. But a lot of us get stuck or get carried away with the business, with career, that we forget why we toiling so hard. So yes. if we're not involved with the lives of our kids, what's the point? You're accomplishing all this, but you're not really sharing, not really experience, not letting them experience. So that comes to mind too, not to forget why are we working at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, it's a really wise advice for people. Because, you know, what was that song by Harry Chapin, uh, Cats in the Cradle, right? I don't, I don't know if you know the song, but, you know, the father was out always working, always working, you know, working, working, working. And eventually the son was like, hey, let's play ball, let's play and all that. And the father's got a lot to work to do today.